Hi, I'm going to show you how to do some web scraping with a pandas function, the read HTML function that is really, really powerful and allows you to do some simple web scraping. Let's get started. So what I'm going to do is go to a Wikipedia page and I am going to want to pull data from tables. And the tables that I'm mostly interested in is the season tables. We have season one through, I believe it's eight. And what I want to be able to do is take the data from these tables, extract the viewership, and create an interactive visual in the end. So if we pop back over to my Jupyter Notebook, I have that already kind of written out in headings for you. So we're going to create a web scraping um, function, and then we are going to take all those tables and concatenate them. We're going to clean up that last column that is going to be our viewership. And then finally, we're going to make a visual. And you're going to see how easy this is. So let's get started. The first thing I want you to do is import pandas as PD. And you know, pandas is the one uh, library that we're using. And then once we have that, I'm going to create a data frame just to show you what this looks like when we scrape. And then I'm going to use pd.read underscore html. And then I need to go back over to my URL here. And I need to copy this. Go back over to your pandas function. And I'm going to drop this in. And I'm going to call the data frame by using df again. And then I'm going to run this and just show you what you get. And it looks like we have an error there. And the reason is, is because I need to encapsulate this in parentheses. So let's run that. And you can see what it's brought back is all the tables that we have seen on the previous website. So if I go back over, you can see that table structure coming through here. We can isolate which tables are there, for example, at the first table would be the first element in this list, because you can see this is indicated by the brackets that it's a list. So I can isolate that with a just a, a bracket and a zero. And then you can see you get the first table there. And then if I change that, we get the second table. And it looks like we're going to have, have the tables one Let's go back over. So we don't want this table. We want season one all the way to season eight. So we'll have like eight different tables in there. So what we're going to have to do is cycle through those tables. So let's go back over. And we're going to have to use a for loop for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is initiate a for loop. So for i and you can call that whatever you want i or x in and then i'm going to use range and then i'm going to go from one to eight is our range and then i am going to just go back up here and copy this part And now we have that running the way we want. But if we just run this, I'll show you what happens. It's just going to cycle through all of those. And if I print that, you, we're pretty much going to get the... So if I do print, we're going to get the same thing we had here. But as you see, it's given us all those tables. So now what I want to do is not print, but I want to append this. So I, what I'm going to do is create an empty list as we had before, and I'm going to call that append maybe underscore data. And then I'll create a list that I can throw these different tables in. So I'm going to eliminate the print and add append underscore data dot append. And we need to tell it to go to each one of those tables as we did here. And instead of this one, we're going to use our i variable there. And let's run that. 
it looks like we got it an issue there just a little bit of a misspelling there so we need to have a pin and let's take a look at the data so I'm gonna escape and B and if I bring in a pin data we should have some data in there in our list and you can see we have all of our tables and actually we need to go a little bit deeper so let's change this to range 9 and run that and then we look at our appended data and now we have everything up to the last season but you can see this is again in a list so what we want to do is uh, concatenate everything and we're just going to use pd.concat and by default that's going to concatenate by row and I'll run that before I save it into a variable and you can see we get a pretty standard standard, standard data data frame with 73 rows and seven columns. I'm gonna save that as our new DF and run that. And then let's, now let's just take a look at the data types. So what we wanna be able to do is visualize this and we can see that's an object. So let's go down and change that. I'm gonna do escape and B to get some more cells. And then I'm gonna isolate this column and change this into a uh, numeric data. So I'm gonna wrap that in parentheses and then I'm gonna isolate DF. Then I'm gonna copy this again and I'm gonna use the pandas to numeric for this pass that function in and I'm gonna drop in that column and that should take care of our, looks like we have an issue. And so our issue is here where we need to split this. So instead of splitting, we can, looks like all of these have a decimal point of three. So before we actually turn this into numeric, we can put in an additional line of code and we can do some list comprehension. We can say uh, df.viewers equal, and then I'm going to only take the first uh, three faces in the string or the this, because all of these are gonna be three decimal points, so four it looks like with the decimal point. So I'm gonna use some list comprehension here and say, Okay, I, for the first X, so we know it's four places, so I'm gonna use a splice and get the first four, but we need to tell it to look in each one of those rows. So X, four X in, just drop in that. So what it, this is essentially is doing is getting the first four characters in that string and it's going to each row and pulling that out. So I'm gonna run that and looks like that worked. And if we run df.info, we should be good to go. And now you see that ha that's a float. And just to show you what it looks like now, because we saved over that column, you can see we have viewership in the millions now. So let's start visualizing this. I'm gonna go down and escape and BBB to give me some space. And then what I'm going to do is bring in Plotly. So I'm going to import Plotly.express, because this is the easy one. And then I'm going to call that um, uh, Go, because this is the old way you used to call Plotly. But you can call this Go or B or PL, whatever you like. So now that I've brought that in, I can use that variable and then create a visual. So let's create a bar chart. So I'm using bar, and then I'm gonna pass in the data. And if you wanna know what arguments you need to pass into this function, you need to pass in the data frame, which we created, and our x and y. So the data frame we added, x equals, and then what I'm gonna bring in is for x, I want the, the overall seasons number, so I'm gonna change that there. 
And then for Y, of course, I want my viewership in the millions. So I'm just going to copy that. So as you see, we have a interactive visual that allows us to see where was the most viewership per episode. But now we want to be able to see per season. So we need to, if our data is, let's just take a look. If our data, is, let's look at the head of our data, df.head. If our data is grouped by the number in the season, maybe we take a little bit of a farther look at that. You, we can see there's 10 episodes per season. So that means we need to group. I'm going to group this data by the number of seasons, the number in the season here. And then I want to take the average of the viewership here and we want to take the average of that and we run that and now we'll have the average but I don't I want to be able to use the X in the Y axis and right now the number in the season is the index so we're gonna put as index and we're gonna put equals false and now you can see we have an extra column and I'm I can call that our group just to make it easier and then if we run that, I'm going to go back up and get a plot here and just come down and then I can change this data frame to group. Our X is going to be a number in the season. And then our Y should remain the same. And we run this. And now you can see we have another visual and we can press shift and O to get rid of that scroll. And now you can see we have another visual with uh, the premiere season getting a lot of views in the middle, maybe the whatever the cliffhanger is. And then towards the end, it's also one of the posts. So that's just a very quick and easy way to do a web scrape with Pandas. Please leave your comments below if you got any questions, if you want to see some deeper level web scraping, uh, don't hesitate to leave your comment below. Thank you.